Um, do you think that cherry picking uh, the sort of poll, polls results, the, the way you, I mean, you gave the example of the Drudge Report, um, does that help? That, would that have helped the Republican cause, or does it simply lead to false hope? I, so does it help? Does overconfidence help the side <laughs> at the polls? I, I don't know exactly. Um, I think uh, on the one hand, uh, you know, in the U.S., you have um, campaigns are, are funded by public contributions, um, and so a candidate would want to seem viable so he keeps getting more money and people don't give up on him. Um, on the other hand, uh, if you kind of create a false narrative, then when new polling data comes out that disputes that result, then, um, then that can amplify the problem and make the candidate seem as though he's lost even more momentum, potentially. Um, there are also cases where having a, a better result in the polls can make a candidate, uh, candidate support is very complacent, where in, uh, in the New York mayor's race, in 2009, we had uh, Michael Bloomberg was, was quite far ahead in the polls, ahead by, by 15 points or so. And so a lot of people said, well, uh, well, I don't need to turn out and vote for him. Um, I'm tired of seeing his ads on the commercials every, every time I turn on the TV. Um, he has did something a little, bit, uh, a little bit dodgy where he uh, changed the laws to get a third term and then changed them back afterwards. So he was popular. People were like, well, you know, I'm not going to go out of my way to vote for him. And I don't have to, evidently, because he's so far ahead in the polls. And he almost, he almost lost that race. He won it by only three or four points instead. So, um, so you don't want your supporters to be overconfident. You don't want them to be too despondent either. But, but I don't know. Um, you know, I think, uh, so are, are sites like the Dutch Report self-consciously trying to spin a narrative? Or are people like Matt Drudge just inherently uh, full of shit, right? Um, probably both, I think. Uh, depending on exactly where you turn, I don't know, you know, but, uh, but and there, there is academic literature on, on our partisans being tactical when they give a response or, or they really have deep-seated beliefs that they're reflecting. Um, I mean, I think more broadly in the United States you've had, um, you've had the Republican Party move away from empirical analysis in, in general. Um, <laughs> it's a big problem, right? Uh, you know, but it, it, and it, it, you see that in their coverage of, of environmental issues, for example, or, or economics or whatever else. So, you know, I perceive the debate over here as being, uh, or as being quite rational, right? When I watched the UK debates um, in 2010, I guess it was, right? I'm like, I take all three of those candidates over most people we have in the United States, frankly. Um, but but th that retreat from kind of empirical analysis and the idea that you kind of create your own uh, reality, right? Um, I mean, that really plays into the way that, that sites like the Dutch Report cover the race. I think if you kind of spin things enough and that becomes what the reality really is, it's a very postmodern worldview, I suppose, in, in some ways. So I think it's hard to cleanly differentiate between or are people spinning but self-consciously and tactically doing so, or do they not know the difference? I think it's kind of a very, a very blurry line.